hi friends uh, this is naresh this is my 18th lecture on design of machine members 2 subject in this uh, session i am going to explain about design procedure of a piston and its parts this is the cross sectional view of a piston this is the half sectional view of a cylinder with a piston okay this is the working function of a piston in a cylinder okay the piston is a cylindrical disc which reciprocates within a cylinder it is either moved by the fluid or it moves the fluid which enters the cylinder the main function of the piston of an internal combustion engine is to receive the impulse impulse from the expanding gas and to transmit the energy to the crankshaft through a connecting rod okay this is the connecting rod okay the piston must also disperse a large amount of heat from the combustion chamber to the cylinder walls okay so this is the main function of a piston now i am going to explain about uh, piston parts the piston of uh, internal combustion engine are usually of a trunk type as shown here uh, such pistons are open at one end and consists of uh, following parts piston head or crown second one is a piston barrel third one is a piston rings fourth one is a piston skirt fifth one is piston pin these five are very important components in a piston okay here you can observe here piston head or crown this one is uh, this this is the cross sectional view half sectional view of a piston okay so this is the wall thickness of the piston this hatching portion indicates the wall thickness okay so here you can observe here this uh, th th is the thickness thickness of the piston head this is a head so this piston head having a thickness th okay th is the thickness of the piston head okay now capital d capital d is the outer diameter outer diameter of the piston or bore yeah we are also consider capital d as a bore diameter okay here you can observe here this thickness th is equal to here from here to here okay this distance also th okay here and second part is a piston barrel piston barrel here you can observe here this is a length of a piston barrel the portion below the piston head is called a piston barrel okay here piston head or crown uh, maybe maybe flat maybe flat or uh, or convex shape or concave shape okay it, it may depending upon the design of combustion chamber okay it withstands the pressure of gas in the cylinder okay whereas a piston barrel here this piston barrel is in cylindrical shape it uh, it is a cylindrical portion of the piston Thought part uh, here piston barrel consists of uh, 
piston uh, ring section and skirt and piston pin okay this piston barrel consists of uh, piston rings that is compression rings uh, on the oil rings and piston pin or gudgeon pin and uh, piston skirt okay the length below the piston head is called uh, piston barrel and here the piston rings third one is the piston rings here you can observe here these uh, grooves are uh, are used for arranging the piston rings piston rings are broadly classified into uh, compression rings and oil control rings okay here you can observe here these uh, grooves for compression rings uh, these uh, these three are the grooves for uh, for compression rings and this last one is used as a, a groove for oil control okay you can also here the, there is a small hole into the inside of the piston okay piston rings uh, the piston rings are used to seal the cylinder in order to prevent the leakage of the gas past the piston okay fourth one is uh, piston skate the piston skate uh, acts as a bearing for the side thrust of the connecting rod on the uh, on the walls of the cylinder okay the portion below the ring section the portion below the piston ring section is called uh, piston skate okay so the length of the uh, piston skit is uh, from here to here you have to consider okay so from here to here this length is a uh, ring section that is uh, in ring section it consists of uh, oil rings and compression rings okay these are the grooves for uh, compression rings and oil rings okay b2 uh, t2 these are the uh, here also t1 t1 is the thickness of the groove and b2 is the gap between uh, two successive rings and t2 is the thickness uh, height of the piston ring okay here piston pin piston pin this horizontal rod is called uh, piston pin it is also known as uh, gudgeon pin gudgeon pin or uh, wrist pin okay it is uh, the piston pin is used to connect the a uh, piston to the connecting rod okay here from the bottom the bottom of the piston we are connecting a connecting rod small end of the connecting rod to the piston pin okay this piston pin is used to connect the piston and the connecting rod okay so these are the main parts in uh, piston so in this session i will explain how to design these five parts okay this is the graphical view these uh, two black black color uh, rings are called uh, compression rings okay this one is uh, a oil ring okay this oil ring consists of holes to absorb the excess oil these are the these are the grooves for uh, inserting the these piston rings and uh, oil rings okay this hole is used for uh, inserting the piston pin this is a piston pin this piston pin is in a hollow cylindrical shape okay the like just like a, a hollow pipe okay here this is a connecting rod this is the small end of the connecting rod okay the hole of uh, this small end connecting rod is equal to the the out, outside diameter of the piston pin okay this is the a piston head uh, this piston head or uh, or piston crown may be flat may be flat convex or concave okay depending upon the design of the combustion chamber okay now i am showing the animation animation of inserting the piston rings okay yeah these are the piston rings here i am inserting piston rings okay 
this is connecting rod okay this is a small end of the connecting rod this is small end of the connecting rod uh, connected to the piston by using piston pin okay this piston this is the piston pin this piston pin is uh, in, inserted in, into the hole of the piston okay these two are the circlips these two are circlips circlips are used to fastening the piston pin okay this is the big end of the connecting rod these two halves are big end these two halves are connected by using these two bolts now here i will show clear assemble view this is the assemble of a connecting rod here you can observe the assemble of a piston piston pin and circlips these two are circlips this is a piston pin with the sleeve okay these two are bolts this is a bronze bush okay this uh, this is also a bush bush is used to use it for a small end of the connecting rod for reducing the wear okay this is the clear assemble view of a piston connecting rod piston pin and big end of the connecting rod with the bolts okay okay friends now i will explain about a design procedure design procedure of a piston in first step you have to find out the suitable thickness of the piston head okay here uh, the design of a piston head the piston head depends upon uh, on the base of uh, strength criteria and uh, on the base of heat transfer okay so that's why uh, i i am dividing this uh, step one into two cases in case a i am designing the piston head on the base of strength criteria in case b uh, i will design the piston head on the base of uh, heat transfer okay so now i am discussing about uh, case a that is on the base of strength criteria okay th is the thickness of the piston head Okay, this is the formula for uh, thickness of the piston head th th is equal to square root of uh, 3p d square by 16 into sigma t p is the maximum inside pressure on maximum inside pressure in the cylinder or uh, maximum pressure acting on the piston head okay so capital d is the bore diameter or uh, diameter of the piston head okay sigma t is the tensile stress in uh, piston materials okay this is the formula by using this formula you have to find out the suitable thickness of the piston head on the base of strength okay so this is the cross-sectional view of a piston here you can observe here this uh, from here to here so this is the thickness this the thickness is equal to th th equal to thickness of the piston head this top portion is called a uh, piston head so we need to design this piston head to to bear the maximum pressures maximum gas gas pressures okay so the suitable thickness th depends upon the uh, pressure maximum inside gas pressure and the diameter of the piston okay so here these are the form well it's uh, th is the thickness of the piston head tb is the bear bearing uh, sorry tb is the sigma sigma b sigma b is the permissible bending stress sigma is the symbol of stress and b refers to bending stress permissible bending stress 
bending stress due to the gas pressures okay p equal to p max equal maximum pressure inside the cylinder or maximum pressure acting on the top of the piston head okay capital d is the inside diameter of the bore inside diameter or bore diameter of the cylinder okay sigma ut sigma ut equal to ultimate tensile stress ultimate tensile stress for a piston materials okay and fs is the factor of safety here uh, the value of our sigma t tensile stress or bending stress is obtained from the ultimate stress by factor of safety this formula is used for determining the permissible stress okay ultimate stress is also called maximum stress but we need to design within the safe limits safe stresses so the safe uh, stress is uh, permissible stress so the perm the formula for permissible stress equal to ultimate stress by fs value factor of safety okay if uh, ultimate stress and factor of safety values are not specified in our problem then you have to consider sigma b sigma b or sigma t equal 35 to 40 40 mega pascal for cast iron materials cast iron piston materials okay 50 to 90 mega pascal for aluminum alloy materials okay these two materials are used for uh, making a piston okay cast iron aluminum alloys uh, iron uh, casting uh, steel okay so those are uh, used for making piston okay here sigma t sigma t or sigma b value 35 to 40 for cast iron and 50 to 90 for aluminum okay aluminum alloy materials so this formula is used for the design of piston head on the base of strength okay and case b for uh, determining the piston thickness okay uh, the thickness the thickness of the piston head uh, on the base of heat transfer or heat dissipation th th equal to h by h by th equal to capital h by 12.56 into k into tc minus t okay on the base of uh, this concentration concentration of heat transfer the thickness of the piston head uh, should be such that the heat absorbed by the piston due to combustion of fuel is uh, quickly transferred to the cylinder walls okay treating the piston head as a flat circular plate its thickness is given by th equal to h by 12.56 into k into tc minus t okay here uh, th is the thickness of the piston head and k is the thermal conductivity thermal conductivity conductivity of the uh, piston material okay uh, here the piston materials are cast iron and aluminum so here capital k is the capital k is the uh, capital K equal to 46.6 watts per meter per degree Celsius for cast iron materials for aluminum alloy materials uh, K equal to 175 watts per meter per degree Celsius okay this the thermal conductivity factor uh, shows the property of uh, heat dissipation okay uh, heat cooling rate or heat transfer rate okay uh, thermal conductivity property shows the heat transfer rate so here the heat transfer rate is uh, 46.6 watts per meter per degree Celsius for cast iron but the aluminum having higher heat transfer rate that is uh, k equal 175 watts per meter per degree Celsius that means aluminum material cools the uh, or uh, dissipate the piston body okay here the cooling capacity of the aluminum material is uh, greater than the cast iron material okay here the cast iron having high compressive strength but uh, it transfer or uh, it transfers the heat from uh, piston wall 
to the cylinder walls in slow manner but uh, aluminum materials transfer heat in faster way okay because uh, the, the, the thermal conductivity property is uh, higher okay is uh, greater than the cast iron so aluminum material is good for uh, heat dissipation but cast iron is good for compressive loads okay so for uh, small engines uh, you can you can use aluminum material for uh, making a piston because uh, aluminum materials uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, uh, sorry aluminum material doesn't support higher loads okay so that's why you don't use aluminum material for uh, heavy engines okay so aluminum materials are used for uh, single cylinder engines just like uh, bikes scooters scooty engines whereas cast iron metals having high compressive strengths and moderate heat uh, transfer rate uh, this type of material is used for uh, heavy engines there is a lorry turbos uh, buses like engines okay so because uh, this cast iron having a uh, high compressive strength as well as uh, moderate uh, cooling rate okay here yeah, the the selection of uh, piston material depends upon uh, load as well as uh, heat transfer rate okay where here uh, tc tc is the temperature at the center of the piston head in degree celsius and the te te is the temperature at the edge of the piston head okay here the for cast iron you can take tc minus te value as a 220 degree celsius for aluminum materials uh, tc minus te equal to 75 degree celsius okay h equal to amount of heat conducted through piston head may be calculated by the following expressions so this uh, capital h is uh, calculated by using this formula h is equal to capital c into hcv into m dot m into bp into 10 power 3 in watts okay here you can observe Yeah, m small m is the mass of the fluid mass of the fuel used per brake power bp means brake power per second in kg per kilowatts per second okay bp means brake power m is the mass of fuel consumed consumed per second okay so here the hcv is the higher calorific value okay it may also depending upon the type of uh, fuel okay capital c is the constant value this is the ratio of heat absorbed by the piston to the total heat developed in the cylinder so you can take uh, the value of c as uh, 0 0.05 okay and the value of hcv depends upon uh, petrol and diesel so the value of uh, hcv for diesel diesel equal to 44000 kilojoules per kg okay for petrol uh, fuels uh, the higher calorific value hcv equal to 47000 kilojoules per kg okay yeah in this uh, step you have to you have to buy hard this formula and uh, this formula okay these two formulas are very important for design of a piston on the base of heat transfer or heat dissipation okay so this is a uh, step one okay i completed step one now i am going to discuss about step two that is a uh, design of a piston ribs and a piston cup okay here you can observe here this is these are the piston ribs 
okay piston ribs depends upon the size of the size of the piston okay uh, here this is the cup okay this cup also depends upon the type of combustion chamber okay so here i will explain Here yeah, TH already we have discussed in previous step that is step one thickness of the piston head okay so the design of piston ribs and uh, piston cup depends upon the size of the piston and the thickness of the piston head okay so when when the value of thickness TH piston head uh, thickness is uh, less than or equal to six mm there is no need of uh, ribs okay. Whereas the thickness, uh, the thickness of the piston head is greater than six mm, you have to provide uh, ribs for supporting the loads. Okay, when uh, here you can observe at the top of the piston, uh, maximum pressures are acting or uh, acting at the top of the piston. Okay, when the loads are acting on the piston, it may fail due to uh, bending okay so for supporting this piston head you have to use uh, piston ribs for uh, heavy loads so that's why uh, more than for more than uh, 6 mm piston thickness you you have to you have to provide piston ribs okay if you if you provide uh, piston ribs then number of ribs equal to you have to consider 4 to 6 okay you may consider 4 or 5 or 6 okay minimum ribs are four okay and uh, that this is the thickness okay thickness uh, of the rib tr equal to uh, th by three that means one by third of the thickness of the piston thickness okay so one by third of the piston thickness to the one by two half of the piston head thickness okay uh, for the piston cups, uh, for design of uh, piston cups, uh, when ratio of a stroke length, stroke length to bore, that means the stroke length is LS, LS or L. Okay, the stroke length uh, is uh, the distance between bottom dead center and top dead center. Okay, that is the stroke length. So the, the ratio of stroke length to the bore diameter is less than or equal to 1.5 then copy is required okay where uh, the ratio of l by d is greater than 1.5 there is no need of arrange a cup okay so l is the stroke length d is the bore diameter okay uh, l by d is uh, up to 1.5 0 to 1.5 a cup is required on the top of the piston if cup is required then radius of the uh, cup is given by 0 0.7 times the diameter of the bore okay so if you want to provide a piston cup then you have to consider 0 0.7 times the diameter of the piston bore okay piston diameter or bore diameter that is a capital d so this is the design procedure of a piston ribs and a piston cup this is a step two okay step two is uh, completed now this is a step three in a step three i am going to explain about uh, design of piston compression rings or pressure rings as well as uh, oil control rings this is the shape of a piston ring okay this is the width width of the piston ring and this is the thickness of the piston ring okay uh, we are providing a gap for inserting the rings okay the piston rings are used to import the necessary radial pressure to maintain the seal between the piston and the cylinder board so these are usually made of a gray cast iron or alloy cast iron because of their good wearing properties and also they retain spring characteristics even at high temperatures the piston rings are of the following two types 
compression rings or uh, pressure rings and oil control rings or oil scrap rings okay here these are the grooves for arranging the piston rings okay this is the groove for arranging the oil control ring okay uh, the length from here to here is called ring section okay you can observe here this is a ring section the length of uh, this ring section i consider for uh, in this step the number of rings uh, depends upon the size of the piston okay so here the compression rings uh, the compression rings are inserted in the grooves at the top portion at the top portion of the of the piston okay at the top portion of the piston and the and maybe 3 to 7 okay the number of uh, piston rings uh, may be 3 to 7 in number okay these rings also transfer heat from the piston to the cylinder okay cylinder and cylinder liner and absorb uh, some part of the piston fluctuation due to the side thrust okay and this is the groove for oil control ring so oil control rings or oil scrapper rings are provided below the compression rings okay so these are the grooves for uh, compression rings so we are providing oil groove below the compression rings these rings provide uh, proper lubrication to the liner by allowing allowing sufficient oil to move up during upward stroke and at the same time scraps the lubricating oil from the surface of the liner in order to minimize the flow of the oil to the combustion chamber okay the, com the compression rings are usually made of uh, rectangular cross section okay the compression rings are usually made of uh, rectangular cross section and the diameter of the here yeah, this is the diameter the diameter of the rings is slightly larger than this cylinder bore okay so so this is the diameter of the piston so here we are providing slightly larger than the cylinder bore a, a part uh, a part of the ring is uh, here you can observe here a part of the ring is cut is cut off in order to permit it to go into the cylinder against this liner wall the diagonal cut or step cut ends uh, as shown here okay diagonal cut or uh, step cut ends may be used the gap between the ends the gap between the ends should be sufficiently large when the rings is, when the rings is put cold so that even at the highest temperature the ends don't touch each other when the ring expands otherwise uh, they might be buckled of the ring Uh, Z, capital Z is the number of piston rings. Okay, total number of uh, piston rings. Total number of piston rings equal to uh, sum of the uh, compression rings plus uh, oil control rings. Okay, you may consider for small engines uh, three to four numbers for uh, piston rings. For oil or oil control rings, uh, you have to consider one to three. The dimensions uh, of cross section here you can the dimension of cross section of this uh, piston ring uh, P this uh, cross section depends upon the radial pressure radial pressure acting on the cylinder wall okay the radial pressure acting on the cylinder wall uh, usually taken as uh, 0 0.025 to 0 0.042 mega Pascal okay b is the radial width radial width of the ring okay so here this is the width this is this is the width you can observe the height of this uh, 
this ring is known as uh, width so the radial width of the ring is given by uh, b equal square root of uh, 3 into pw into d square by sigma t okay pw is the wall uh, wall uh, radial pressure on the cylinder wall and capital D is the bore diameter of the cylinder. Sigma T is the tensile stress induced in the piston material or uh, tensile stress induced in the ring material. So here the sigma T equal to permissible tensile stress for ring material usually taken as uh, 85 to 110 megapascal for cast iron rings. Okay. And the axial thickness of the piston ring equal to H. Okay. This is the you can observe here. The axial thickness of the piston ring is equal to height of the groove. Height of the groove equal to H. Okay. So the height of the groove or uh, axial thickness of the piston ring is equal to H equal to uh, 0 0.7 B to B. Okay. And uh, minimum axial thickness of the piston ring equal to H minimum equal to D by 10 into Z. Z is the total number of piston rings. Total number of the piston rings. Okay. So here the width, uh, this is the H1 is the height of the top land. Okay. So H1 equal to uh, TH to 1.2 times the TH. 1 to 1 to 1.2 times the thickness of the piston head. TH means uh, piston head thickness. Okay. And the width of the ring groove. That is uh, H2. You can observe here. This is the H2. H2 equal 0 0.75 H2 H. Okay, these are the dimensions for uh, compression rings and the fourth step is uh, piston barrel the piston barrel is a cylindrical portion of the piston it contains piston rings skate and piston pin you can observe here from here to here this is the piston barrel okay this piston barrel is a cylindrical shape and it contains piston rings, oil rings, piston pin, and piston skit. Okay. Uh, this is, these are the formulas for uh, piston barrel. So H3, H3 is the thickness of the piston barrel at the top end. Okay. So this is the thickness. The thickness of the piston. Uh, barrel okay this is the uh, wall thickness of the piston barrel h3 h3 equal to 0 0.03 into d plus b plus 4.9 mm okay this is the formula for uh, thickness of the piston barrel d is the bore diameter okay and h4 h4 is the thickness of the piston barrel at the lower lower or open end this is the open end of the piston okay so here the thickness of the piston barrel h4 equal to 0 0.25 h3 h3 to 0 0.35 h3 okay so these two are the formulas for design of piston barrel now the fifth step is uh, piston sketch. This is the lower portion of the piston ring. Ring section is called uh, piston sketch. Okay, the portion of the piston below the ring section is known as a piston sketch. The sketch acts as a bearing for the side thrust for the side thrust of the connecting rod on the walls of the cylinder. The length of the piston skit should be such that the bearing pressure on the piston barrel due to the inside thrust doesn't exceed 0 0.25, 0 0.25 megapascal of the projected area for low speed engines. 
and 0.5 megapascal for uh, high speed engines uh, it may be noted that the maximum thrust will be during the expansion stroke the side thrust uh, the side thrust on the cylinder liner is usually taken as 1 by 10 times the maximum gas pressure okay so the length of the piston skirt also depends upon the uh, maximum gas or maximum load acting on the top of the piston okay so the formula for uh, length of the piston skid equal ls equal to 0 0.1 into 0 0.1 into pi into dp by 4 into sigma b okay so this is the length of the piston skid and the here this one is the empirical relation or empirical relation formula for the length of the skit so you can use this one or this one okay here the total length of the piston the total length or total height of the piston equal to l l equal to d to 1.5 times the diameter of the both diameter of the cylinder or the another formula is there uh, capital L equal to length of the top land the length of the top land that is the h1 plus length of the ring section plus length of the skirt okay so by adding these three lengths you will get the total height of the piston okay now the last step is uh, piston pin design of piston pin it is very important in our exam point of view okay this is a piston pin you can observe here this horizontal rod is called a piston pin or a gudgeon pin or a wrist pin okay so piston pin is also called a gudgeon pin or a wrist pin it is used to connect the piston to the connecting rod okay so this piston pin is used to connect the small end of the connecting rod to the piston okay this is the cross-sectional view of the piston pin this is the isometric view of the piston pin this piston pin is in a hollow cylindrical shape okay just it looks like a hollow pipe okay so we have to design this uh, hollow cylinder okay so the outside the outer diameter of the piston pin is obtained from the formula d naught d naught is the outer diameter of the piston pin piston pin okay outer diameter of the piston pin d naught equal to pi into d square p by 4 into pb1 into l1 okay this is the formula for uh, outside diameter of the piston pin okay here capital d is the bore diameter of the cylinder and p is the maximum gas pressure acting on the piston or maximum inside gas pressure in the cylinder pb1 pb1 is the bearing pressure bearing pressure at the bushing of a small end of the connecting rod so this is the bearing pressure acting acting on the a small on the phosphor bronze bush used for a small end of the connecting rod okay so l1 is the L1 is the length of the piston pin in the connecting rod. Here, this is the length of the connecting rod. Okay, small end of the connecting rod. So, this one is the L1. L1 equal to 0.45 times the diameter of the bore. Okay. So, by using uh, this these formulas, you will get the outer diameter of the piston pin now you have to find out the total length of the piston pin okay the total length of the piston pin also is equal to the outside diameter of the piston okay
Yeah, this uh, piston pin passes through the bosses. These uh, these are called bosses. Okay, this piston pin passes through the bosses provided on the inside of the piston skit and the bush of the small end of the connecting rod. Okay, the bush of the small end of the connecting rod. Uh, here, here we are inserting small end of the uh, bush of the connecting rod. Okay, so this connecting rod passes through this uh, this barrel. Okay, so we have to design a piston pin on the base of. Uh, bending load acting on the piston pin this is the formula for uh, bending stress acting on the piston pin here yeah, the materials uh, used for uh, piston pin is usually case hardened steel okay case hardened steel alloy containing nickel chromium molybdenum vanadium okay uh, this piston pin having high tensile strength from 700 to 900 mega Pascal. The connection between the piston pin and the small end of the connecting rod may be made either full floating type or semi floating type. Okay. So here MB, MB is the bending moment, maximum bending moment for uh, act. here, you can observe here. This is a small end of the connecting rod, this is a piston pin, okay. So uh, I, capital I is the moment of inertia moment of inertia for uh, this uh, this piston pin you have to consider this piston pin as a hollow pipe so uh, for hollow shafts or hollow pipes the moment of inertia i equal to pi by pi by 64 into d naught square minus d square d naught is the outer diameter di di is the inner diameter okay and uh, here sigma b the value of uh, sigma b that is bending stress uh, if not you don't know the value of uh, sigma b or if it is uh, not given in our problem then you can use uh, these values 84 mega pascal for uh, carbon steels 140 mega pascal for uh, heat treated alloy steels okay so the formula for uh, bending moment mb equal to f into d by 8 here f is the force force acting on the piston okay force acting on the piston pin that is equal to pi by 4 d square into p okay so this formula is obtained from the uh, cross sectional area and that means uh, it, stress stress formula the stress equal to load by area load equal to load or force equal to stress into area here you have to consider stress as a pressure that pressure acting on the piston maximum gas pressure acting on the piston equal to p into cross sectional area of the piston okay pi by 4 d square is the cross sectional area of the piston so this is the formula for load total load acting on the top of the piston Okay, so the load acting on the piston depends upon the maximum gas pressure, that is P. Okay, so the bending stress, the value of bending stress also depending upon the value of maximum inside gas pressure. Okay, and the size of the piston pin also depending upon the moment of inertia, that moment of inertia value depends upon the maximum maximum bearing maximum pressure maximum inside gas pressure okay so you have to consider inner diameter of the piston that is the di di equal to 0 0.6 times the outer diameter so the value of uh, outer diameter is obtained from this formula okay 
the outer diameter of the piston is obtained from uh, inertia formula okay uh, here for gray cast irons uh, the boss diameter you have to design for a boss you can observe here this is a boss okay so here you can observe here uh, this is the outer diameter of the bus okay so the formula for outer diameter of the bus equal to bus equal to 1.4 times the outside diameter of the piston pin okay for gray cast iron you have to consider 1.4 times the outer diameter of the piston pin and 1.5 times the outside diameter of the piston pin okay the clearance between the liner and the piston okay you have to provide uh, some clearance between the liner and piston that value is equal to 0 0.0375 to 0 0.1875 for cast iron and 0 0.07 to 0 0.37 for uh, aluminum okay you have to provide uh, more clearance uh, for aluminum materials okay because aluminum material having high thermal expansion value so that's why you have to provide uh, more clearance for aluminum material whereas the cast iron having a uh, low thermal expansion that's why you you need not to provide more clearance okay so these are the design procedure for a design of a piston and piston parts okay friends in this uh, session i explained about uh, entire for entire design entire design of a piston piston pin piston rings piston barrel okay piston skit okay in next class i will explain about uh, problem problem for design of a piston okay by using these uh, six steps how to design i will explain about uh, how to design a piston for uh, for multi cylinder engine or single cylinder engine i will explain later okay okay thank you